Howdy guys and welcome back. Ruckus here with my third editor video. Today, as promised, we are looking at Tiger 223, my very own custom Panzer Kampfwagen 6 Tiger skin. We're going to look at the file types involved and how I went about editing them in Photoshop for the look I was after. So, in the background here, I've got running a couple of things, one of them being Blitz. And there she is, there's the machine in question, Tiger 223, looking resplendent in the blue. Obviously it's got my very own color palette on the top, um, which leaves out a lot of the things like these uh, cable details and you know, shovels and boxes and things on the front. And then there's a couple of little markings and extra details for visual appeal, like the numbering down the sides, the Balkans thing, that's a German word that I cannot pronounce, <laughs> it means bar, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the rumpus on the front, the kill markings, that kind of stuff. So, what do we need to do this? Let's get uh, out of this and look within the game files for the correct folder destination if you guys are following along. So, we go World Tanks Blitz. For Mac, you need to go show package contents, resources, data. 3D, tanks, German, and then there's a big list of things in here, but we're ignoring that, going into images, and here is an equally big list of things. <laughs> Every vehicle here in-game for the German nationality is here, uh, and each vehicle has a bunch of files that um, do different things, but we don't have to worry about most of those, like uh, say in the Waffentrager here, there's a crash file. Uh, that kind of thing is how the vehicle looks once it's been blown up on the battlefield. But the only one we need to look at is this here, if we were looking at the Roffentrager, which we're not. So that's the file destination. And if I look into the folder I've got for this episode, Tiger223's skin file is this one here, PZ6 underscore Tiger1 dx11.dds. The file is a .dds, which you can find an extension for uh, when you're exporting this from Photoshop off the internet. If you watch my camo videos, you're probably familiar with that. Basically, that's what it looks like. Converted into a PNG that you can view quite easily. It is what the game wraps over the top of the 3D model. This is the base layer. And then if you're putting camo over your machine, uh, the camo gets overlaid again on top of this here. That is my file edited for the game with uh, the blue hue and all the details. So let's have a look at that in Photoshop. Here it is. Now, I started with plain skin like this. On top of that, overlaid a blue hue, and then on top of that, more details. But first things first, you need to know, uh, if you go into the same level of detail that I went, you need to know what this jumbled mess of surfaces is. And for that, it's kind of painstaking. <laughs> You've kind of got to, uh, you can identify the bigger components, that's a turret there, that, for instance, is a stock turret. Uh, there's the hull, side skirts, wheels, obviously. Uh, this turned out to be barrels. To do this, very painstaking, you kind of got to paint an area, uh, then bring it, bring this file into the game, and then within the game, see what you've changed, and that'll allow you to identify um, which part is which. Most of it's pretty easy, um, turrets and that kind of stuff. But once you get down to the nitty gritty, for instance, if we look at the model you know these big surfaces are easy but if you're trying to isolate just the shovel handle or the shovel uh, you know the blade on the front from this mess uh, it can take you quite a while I mean who would have thought that down here we're looking at this lump of color here is the shovel blade <laughs> I mean <laughs> To find that kind of detail, it does take a while, it's kind of painstaking, but I managed to get through it, and if you're trying to do the same level of details I did, this is where I'd recommend you start. Breaking it down, uh, piece by piece, uh, labeling it so that you can come back to it later once you get to that component, and uh, starting from there. 
So with that out of the way, actually let's just do a quick run through of how I would bring this into the game. So let's uh, just make a shape. There we go. To help with it, that will do. Right, we're gonna save this, save as, in the folder I was looking at before. I can change this to .dds. Here are the export settings I'm currently using, which will pop up once you've uh, installed the plugin to Photoshop. So we're looking at DXT5 as the format. You've got to select MIP map. Uh, there's a bunch of filters here. They don't look too different from one another. Some of them uh, give you a more plasticky look, kind of a higher sheen, which I don't like. I settled on box after quite a bit of playing around and it seems to work okay. Tick the alpha box, leave it at that. Okay. Let's move back to the folder. And that is the new one. This is it here. Let's uh, get rid of that. I played with that before. Right, so we've got to bring this now into the game folder, the correct destination. But first, we're going to need that name again because it has to be labeled correctly. Copy that. Uh, skin map. All right, and we're going to need another file. Let's go to applications again. This um, can get confusing <laughs> if you're new to it. Definitely back up uh, the relevant files and folders, even back up a whole folder if you need to, like the whole tanks folder. That way, um, something goes wrong, it's happened to me before, um, instead of having to reinstall the game, you can just reinstall the folder and hopefully things will go back to where they were. So we're in the correct German images folder here. Let's just pick this one, copy that, bring it over, paste that. It's gonna replace the existing .dds file. Replace and ask me for permission, do that. Let's go to Blitz. Uh, this is the old version. You need to cycle this to get it to load the new one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, you can see the white lump we pasted over the top of the turret showing through and all these markers that I was using to identify bits of the uh, machine. That is a mess. But this is how you do it, well, this is how I did it anyway. Let's get out of that now. Let's get rid of this, in fact, get rid of that all together. We don't want the labels. What I did here to give Tiger223 the look it got was to start with, bring in a new layer, a new fuel layer, color, hello, let's go with uh, red, that will look suitably awful. <laughs> uh, we'll rasterize that, and then you can change the blend mode up here so that it looks through, Photoshop looks through this onto the layers below. So we'll just go overlay, and just reduce that a bit. All right. So this is pretty much what I did to finish with, and where, that's where you can start before you finish with something like this here. That was where that red lump of color was where I started. And then by erasing portions of that, you get a more a realistic look instead of everything being colored, which just looks terrible. Uh, the weathered parts have less color, um, edges where it's rusty will have uh, less color, uh, big surfaces where you want all the color will retain it. So let's just bring up the eraser. I'll give you a quick example of how I went about it. Um, I'm using a stylus and tablet, not just a mouse and keyboard. It's, uh, you can do it with mouse but it's a lot easier if you've got a stylus. I've just got a cheap one, it's like Wacom Bamboo, small little thing, but it does a pretty good job. Um, bring up, say, that there. This is an eraser. You don't want it 100%. Let's just drop that down, drop these down. That's uh, opacity and flow. And you know, play around here. This portion here was where I was like, the commanders or the crewmen are climbing up the side of the turret into the commander's cupola here. So I kind of weathered that a bit, so it looked like the paint was rubbing off there. And that is pretty much how you get to this. I mean, from the solid block color down to this here. It does take a while if you want to be as finicky about it as me, but um, it can be done, as proved here. On top of that, I've got a little bit extra stuff. 
um, I just created a new layer and then with a paintbrush you, know, you don't have to use a solid brush you can bring in new uh, different different brushes I've only got a few basic ones here but whoops um, you just pick a bit of color let's drop that right down the opacity right down 10% drop my brush size All right you can paint on rust which I've done here or whatever you want to paint onto the side of the vehicle so you can see the you know as the water drips down here got a bit of rust coming down that way Get rid of that uh, there's also a bit of extra blackening just to make things stand out uh, like the side under here this is portion here was under the sides of the side skirt below behind the wheels I really wanted to make that stand out more so a bit of extra blackening and on the these are the barrels here the barrels of the gun and that is pretty much it besides the icons in here we've got a bunch of different things kill markers on the barrel up here uh, the mascot the mastodon let's bring up right here and they're not just painted on solid you notice that this here is actually kind of negative space there's a gap there in the turret surface so same again with the eraser um, it's just erasing that white so that it looks more realistic Mastodon, let's bring that back to where it should be. Oh god, what have I done? Oh, that's all right. Uh, same deal with the 223 down the side. You can see there that it's been removed and um, some brown rusting is coming through there. And that, you know, you get the gist of it. The Balkan Cruise, German for bar, I've definitely pronounced that wrong, is this piece here and I kind of raced that so it looked like it was behind the tow cable there you can see yeah that's it quite time consuming but kind of rewarding when you bring it in game and it starts to look the way you kind of visualized one criticism I did get which was fair was that the blue is a bit too intense it looks a bit turquoise and um, if you wanted to adjust things afterwards you can go down here uh, bring up a list of different overlays you can put on. So what I've done is gone color balance over just the blue hue and then what I did was on the highlights kind of just changed just here to lower the intensity of that blue. So that looked pretty good. We'll save that again. DS save same export settings when you're ready Photoshop thank you um, that's the old terrible looking one we can go in here give that the same name and just copy paste that into the file the folder sorry Right, now I'm not too sure whether you noticed, but I made a mistake there in the naming of the file. I brought it in the game and it didn't work. And I was like, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> so this is take two. What I did, I copied that name, brought it in the file, pasted it, and it brought in the .dds as well. So it's a .dds, .dds, and that didn't replace the correct file. So you really need to be careful with your naming. You need to keep backups. Uh, make things as simple as you can for yourself because it's quite easy to get confused and to lose track of where you stand so that is the correct name copy that paste that into blitz as folder replace right and I did it before anyway so here we go I know it's good that is the adjusted tiger skin looking pretty good I don't mind it Maybe a little light, maybe a little too yellow, but um, yeah, it's okay. Now, the last thing to note is that this is terrible looking when you try and put other camos over it. So what I did was remove the option to do that. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but 
we're gonna we're gonna briefly look at it. Each file, each machine, I should say, has a camo mask in the game. If we go back out of the file here, folder, it's in camouflage masks within the same um, German folder, camouflage masks, and it's a PVR. Each machine has a PVR and a .tex file. The PVR is what controls uh, the camo overlay over the top of the vehicle skin. So. Converted to a PNG, this is Tiger's camo mask. Right, it's a simple black and white white file. Black denotes no camo, white denotes camo. You can see there's the turret, the size of the turret, the top of the turret have camo applied. Uh, hole, same deal, yada yada yada. What I had to do was bring this into PVR text tool, it's a free file, a free program you can find on the internet. Bring that in, the settings are a nightmare, I'm not gonna get into it, but what I did was create a PNG file. Uh, within, you know, you can do it in Photoshop, and it has to be black for this to work. It has to be the same size as the .pvr from the game, uh, which is 256 by 256. Solid black, bring that into PVR text tool. You export it with the correct settings, which again are a pain in the ass, and I found by trial and error. Export that from PVR text tool, and then you replace um, the appropriate file within the game. And that, in effect, disables it because the game is going, Well, I'm looking to put this camo over, and it's saying, Put the camo nowhere, and so it, uh, nothing comes up. It's not uh, completely necessary if you design your camo scheme in a way that doesn't look bad um, with uh, the game's camos overlaid at the top of it, but for this particular concept, uh, having any of these over the top of this, that's uh, not a good look, so I, I chose to opt out of that. I was also looking at, I haven't done it yet, but you could create, if you had the time and the know-how, you could create, I think, um, a skin that had just the icons so we can get rid of um, let's keep everything else except for the icons you could create this I think as the skin and then a, an associated PVR file that said put camo over the usual positions but left out these areas and then you you could still have these details and they wouldn't be covered up by the uh, the game's camo. So I started playing around with it, haven't finished it yet. Basically, uh, all black under the icons and this, if you brought this into the game, it would say, you know, leave camo completely off everywhere except for where you want the icons, which isn't what you want. So invert the whole thing. That wouldn't work either. You'd have to change it so that you brought in this here brought in this here right and somehow combine the two so that it was this file you were bringing to the game this camo file but these blackened items were in the right position and that way um, they wouldn't be covered up by the game's camo I'm probably talking absolute garbage by now. I'm sure this could be done. I just haven't gone about doing it and I should probably leave it for another episode. In fact, I will. <laughs> so, thank you for bearing with my ramblings. <laughs> Where is the game gone? That is Tiger223. That is editing the game skins for your own purposes. Uh, if you are doing it out there and you've made something fantastic, send me some links, send me some pictures. I'd like to see what you guys are creating. So thank you guys once again for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.